Hello. In this video, I'm going to go in depth on a topic that I haven't really covered much. Up until equilibrium, slippage and volatility wasn't much of an issue, simply because TradingView cannot really handle the one second time frame for processing alerts. Equilibrium has changed that and it has opened up a new door to examining profits in a whole different context. That context brings out a whole new set of devils that can turn profit into losses in literal mere seconds. Today I'm going to talk about that process specific with equilibrium and demonstrate just how this process works and why it can be both good and bad. Volatility in general is what drives the markets. Bollinger Bands and ATR are perfect examples of volatility working to produce profits. Those profits are the direct result of the volatility of the market. Now from TradingView's perspective, the one minute, five minute, one hour time frame, those are large enough that extreme volatility and slippage are not a major factor. And I'm saying volatility and slippage because you can't have one without the other. A highly volatile market is going to have a high amount of slippage. And we are going to talk about why that is and why in reality slippage is really the shadow of volatility. You don't see it, but it's always there. Now from the standard market practices of normal time frames, one minute, five minute, 30 minute, one hour, all the standard time frames that TradingView offers, the volatility level is considered not severe, but the slippage level is always considered an average of 0.3%. That means when you're looking at a higher time frame and you pick a price, that price could be plus or minus 0.3% difference between trading view and your actual exchange. If you're making a purchase and the purchase price drops 0.3% before it hits the exchange to place the order, slippage has worked in your favor. If however, when you make a purchase and the price goes up 0.3%, slippage has worked against you. The same holds true when you go to sell. If slippage works for you, your selling price will actually be higher than what you asked for. If slippage works against you, then your selling price will be lower than what you've asked for. On average, slippage will always neutralize itself. Your worst case scenario is slippage working against you on both the purchase and the sale, in which case you will have lost 0.6% market value of that process. Your best case is when slippage works for you, in which case you will have gained 0.6% profitability. 
Slippage is not really good or bad in and of itself. And when you are working with larger time frames and larger take profit values, like 2%, slippage doesn't play a major role. It's still there, but you don't feel it as much, if at all. Now when I say on average slippage being 0.3%, that is what's considered an acceptable value. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. As technology continues to improve, slippage is becoming less, except in the most extreme cases. And that really is the context of Equilibrium's success. Equilibrium lives on volatility. The more aggressive the market swings up and down, the better your profits are going to be. But somewhere in there is a fine line between volatility and its shadow, slippage. If your slippage becomes too extreme and overtakes your volatility, you will always trade in a market against you even though mathematically you will win every trade. There is no easy way to actually see if that's the case except to try to trade it in small amounts. Paper trading can never eliminate this kind of a situation. So sometimes, in order to determine the true test of the market, you just have to use real money. But now let's get into the details of how equilibrium really can maximize the potential of volatility and slippage and how it can either help you or severely hurt you. So I have glitch right here, it's done well, this is 2%, I'm going to enlarge this, spread it out so we can see the candles really well. I'm also going to turn off the anchor line for now, it's not something we need. This will help enlarge the display so we can see the actual candles. Now, for a 2% deviation take profit, the market looks reasonably calm. There is no volatility per se. You can see the market fluctuating up and down in small increments, but the candles aren't over the top. They're not insane. They don't cross two or three boundaries at once. This is a reasonable process. And that does a good job in producing large numbers of purchases. Glitch has proven very good in being the right mix between volatility and slippage. As you can see currently it has 214 purchases and 196 sells. Cycle resets doesn't matter. All that matters is your sales and your purchases. When you're looking at your volatility those are what count. The higher these numbers the more volatile the coin is on this time frame. The higher the numbers, the better the profitability, but the higher the risks. This is important to understand this relationship because wherever you have volatility, you will always have slippage. You will always have the opportunity for the market to help you 
or hurt you in your trade. Understanding that dynamic is critical to the success of your trade. So now we have 2% volatility. I want more volatility out of this coin. How do we accomplish that? Well, easy. We lower the percentage. This is on KuCoin. So my trading fees are actually 0.2% round trip. If I pay my fees in KCS, it's 0.16%. So that's fairly cheap. So I can actually go lower in my take profit and artificially create more volatility. So from the standpoint of this process, we're going to focus just on the number of cells. 196. So let's come in, let's lower our percentage to 1%. Now we have increased volatility in the market. It's an artificial increase, but it still shows some significance. Our cells have gone from 196 to 552. Realistically, we haven't changed our total profit. Our profit's actually going to be the same in the long run. So whether you sell one time at 2%, or two times at 1%, because you're paying a percentage base, you're not going to affect your fees, and you're not going to affect your profits. But you see dramatically the volatility of the situation. The candles begin to take more space between the boundaries they become more agitated. Because we have a 1% volatility now, you are looking at slippage still of 0.6% in both ways. This could help you or hurt you. You're still going to make a profit because of the coin and the exchange. In this case, your worst case profit is going to be 0.2%. 1% minus the worst case slippage, and then minus your fees. But I want more volatility. I want to drive this whole process insane. I want to hit the market hard and fast. So, I'm going to enter a very dangerous territory. I want 0.5%. Now, again, I'm not changing the amount of profit I take in the long run. I'm not changing the amount of fees I pay in the long run. What I am doing is creating artificial volatility by looking at the market at smaller runs. This artificial volatility though has a lot of prices to pay. This is the devil's sandbox in a lot of ways. We are now at 1,619 cells. So we're pretty much three times as many cells at 0.5% for 
versus 1% at 552 cells. That artificial volatility, and I say artificial because the market hasn't changed. Only the way we look at the market has changed. That artificial volatility has just tripled your risks at a minimum. But it has also doubled your worst case budget. A 1% value for equilibrium is 100 maximum steps, 100 maximum depth below original purchase price. Having a 0.5% boundary now means you have a maximum depth of 200. So if you were dealing with $100 for your budget at 1%, 0.5% now means your budget could go up to as much as $200. A 2% value means your budget will be roughly $600. Five to 600 depending upon your position size. I'm using $10 as my example for $500 and 2%. But again, you see how volatility now begins to play a role in driving the sell up. But here in line is where slippage can eat you alive. Your boundaries are 0.5%. Your worst case is 0.6%. Your worst case on a profitable sell could cost you a minimum of 0.1%. And then you pay your fees. So this is that gray area, the devil's playground of trading. While you can easily make a generous profit here, by burning off through more trades. The amount of burn off is going to be slower in some respects, faster in other respects, but it's going to be extremely risky. So let's see if we can find some good combinations that really highlight the problem. Okay, let me see if I can find my mouse here. Okay, this candle is a perfect example. This candle crosses two boundaries. This is where slippage can work in your favor because it will make two purchases at a lower price. Equilibrium does not change its boundaries. So if a price skips a boundary, Equilibrium will still make a purchase at what it expects to be that boundary level. So if a price drops 5%, Equilibrium will make 10 separate purchases with a 0.5% deviation. Be sure you understand the risks of what a lower deviation means in relation to how equilibrium works. Now later on, that can help you drastically improve your profitability. But in the short term, that can be problematic if you're not prepared for that kind of extreme volatility and the kind of slippage that can occur with it. It is not uncommon to see a candle go through three or four levels at one time. Extreme market shifts have extreme consequences. And I'm going to change the timeline here to see if I can find a couple of candles that demonstrate this process. Okay, K 
here we go. This particular candle is a good example of crossing multiple boundaries. In fact, most of these candles cross multiple boundaries. And that means multiple purchases. Equilibrium will not skip levels, even if the price does. That seems counterintuitive to the way the process should work. But when you actually work out the mathematics by hand, it's critical that these steps take place in exact sequences. Okay, let's back out and go back to one second. Let's see if we can find some more volatile coins. Okay, at the one second level, this is actually a pretty volatile candle, a rapid drop. Over the weekend, when we had that big drop, and Glitch dropped 50% of value, there were quite a few levels there involved in one single drop at the one second level. Now, from the standpoint of what we are seeing here, we're looking at candles. Equilibrium doesn't look at candles. Equilibrium doesn't care about candles. All that matters to Equilibrium and the secret of its abilities is strictly price. Price in a way that becomes the driving mechanism that can both profit enormously and it can be extremely devastating. Here is a candle that could be a nightmare. This one candle could easily cause equilibrium to make four separate purchases. TradingView doesn't allow or demonstrate multiple purchases on one candle, but from the standpoint of equilibrium, it doesn't have these limits. It isn't restricted by this artificial boundary of what a candle represents to the human mind. This volatility will bring enormous profit later on, but it also brings enormous risk in the short term. There are many contexts and aspects that can be very problematic. Okay, let's look at this. This is one minute. This candle only has one purchase in trading view. Equilibrium could literally make 60 different purchases because it is working at one second intervals. Extreme speed to keep the price as close to these boundaries as possible. Because the difference between the price and the boundary is slippage. And too much slippage will hurt your profitability. Even though you could be perfectly profitable when equilibrium does its analysis by the time your order gets to the exchange, there could be enough volatility and slippage to actually make your selling price less than your buying price. In which case, you will lose money, even though 
you won the trade, you still lost it at the same time. Take careful attention to the amount of volatility and don't use large values for your lots. Always test coins in small values. When you are at this level with extreme scalping contexts, volatility can be a wonderful driving tool for your profits, but its sister shadow slippage can wreck you in ways you can't even fathom until they happen. Every trading view indicator, including Jackrabbit's modulus framework, is subject to volatility and slippage, every one of them. That's what drives every single market purchase from the beginning of time. It's a matter of getting to the point to where you can get down to one second resolutions that you begin to really feel the impact and that impact can and of itself be terrifying or it can be one of the best profits you will ever see. As I demonstrated over the weekend with Glitch, coins can be quite generous. But as many have demonstrated from the equilibrium area of the Jackrabbit server, having that gray area between volatility and slippage, where if slippage overshadows volatility, you will lose money even when you're making money, or so it says you're making money. There is no substitute for carefully researching any coin at this level. If anything, research is critical here. This is an area that goes beyond most trading scopes. Scalping at the one second level is extreme. Take cautious steps to protect yourself. Now I'm going to take you into my VPS where I have been trading two coins at this level, extreme levels. The first coin I have been trading at this level, 0.5%, is Sushi. Now I have $390 position with Sushi right now. And as you can see, I am burning it down quite slowly. You can see up here what my budget was. And you can see the process of the burn down. I'm only doing two lots, which was roughly one dollar, a little more than one dollar for what KuCoin allows for my minimum. But this give-take dynamic is very aggressive. So far, I have been fortunate enough that slippage has been working in my favor, and it has been very minute. But I have to watch this because it could very easily turn against me, and that could be a problem. Now here, this is a 2%, so slippage and volatility aren't that big of a deal. But my fees are 0.8%, so I still don't have a lot of room to work with here, but it's still doing well. Again, also 2% deviation take profit, a slow steady course. And you'll notice the higher the deviation take profit, the slower the functionality. Even though equilibrium is hitting the exchange once a second, 
it's going to naturally take longer for that deviation take profit boundaries to be hit. And finally, glitch. And you can see very aggressive, very rapid. You can see even when the timing, just how aggressive and rapid these transactions are. Again, this is very gray area. Right now, I'm doing well, but I have to keep close track of it. 0.5% on a coin this aggressive can be a losing streak. So I have to watch it, and I may have to change it to a higher percentage. Equilibrium does offer me the advantage of being able to do that, and it will recover short-term losses over time. But it still is something to be aware of when you're planning out exactly what you want for your take profit and deviation. How aggressive do you want to be versus how much risk you want to take on. As soon as you go below the threshold of slippage, the general consensus of plus or minus 0.3% or a worst case scenario of 0.6% when both sides of the market are against you, you automatically elevate your risk significantly. You must take care not to overextend yourself or your budget on these kinds of trades. They are high risk. They are very much something to be careful with. So as you can see, volatility and slippage are your friend, but they can just as easily be your worst nightmare. Plan well. Trade safe. Until next time.